As the first actor to play three different English queens, she is acting royalty of the highest order. Oh, gentlemen, why such long faces? Are we about a marriage or is a funeral in prospect? Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, where today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Helen Mirren performances. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we've revisited some of Mirren's most memorable performances, including the roles that first stoked her glittering career and those that have fueled it ever since. I suppose I have to make my own breakfast. Number 10, Chris Harper, Calendar Girls. Look, we're planning a calendar for John, everyone. Mirren led an all-star cast for this true-to-life tale, centering on a chapter of the Women's Institute who, after one of their members loses a husband to leukemia, raises funds for a local hospital by producing a nude calendar. In the film, Helen plays Chris, the leader of the group and a character based on Trisha Stewart, the real-life brains behind the Calendar Girls movement. We're going to need considerably bigger buns. It's a powerful and, at times, emotional performance from Mirren, in part due to the death of her own brother, who died of cancer during filming. Yeah, it was about women being, um, you know, proactive and... and empowered. And empowered and, and naked. naked. And <laughs> naked. <laughs> Number nine, Amy Dodd's Last Orders. I could tell. Just by the way you looked at me. For a film boasting the talents of Michael Caine, Tom Courtney, Ray Winston and the late Bob Hoskins, it's Helen Mirren who steals the show as widower Amy Dodds. When her husband passes, it's his dying wish that his wife and his four closest friends travel to Margate to scatter his ashes. Not once in 50 years did she give me a sign, not even a flicker that she knew me, who I was. Along the way, the group begin to reminisce about the old days with several long-kept secrets coming to the fore in the process. A huge hit with critics, Mirren's performance in particular was singled out for praise. Most I've ever wanted, the most I've ever hoped for in that. In those 50 years, I haven't asked for the earth, believe me. Number 8, Georgina Spiker, the cook, the thief, his wife and her lover. I have a petrol allowance of £40 a week, which I never use. One part art house black comedy, another part gangster movie gore fest, there are few films out there like The Cook, The Thief, His Wife and Her Lover. And honestly, how could there be? But there are also few performances quite like Mirren's as Georgina Spiker, the wife of Michael Gambon's Albert Spiker, the titular thief, who's also a despicably violent gangster. Where are you going? I left my lighter in the toilet. For God's sake, you don't need it. I need it. Anything but formulaic, director Peter Greenway's film is a story of adultery, revenge and even cannibalism, with Mirren front, centre and utterly unforgettable. No, that's impossible. It's better to do it under his nose. Number 7, Queen Elizabeth I, Elizabeth I. Be off before I hang you, I'm minded to hang you now. Mirren was HBO's first choice to play the Tudor Queen for this show long before anything resembling a script was even written for the two-part miniseries. And it proved a wise casting choice, with the stage and screen veteran delivering an acting masterclass for the part, capturing Elizabeth I's now legendary role as ruler. It is the last compliment I should treasure, my lord. And Mirren's efforts didn't go unnoticed either, as she picked up an Emmy, a Screen Actors Guild Award, and a Golden Globe for her work. But of course, this wasn't the first or last time she played a British monarch. I am the only thing that stands between you and destruction. Number six, Mrs. Wilson, Godsford Park. Didn't you hear me? I'm the perfect servant. I have no life. Writer Julian Fellows originally conceived Downton Abbey as a spin-off to his 2001 film Gosford Park, before opting to develop it as a standalone property. While it certainly would have been intriguing to see Mirren appear on the series as Mrs. Wilson, the screen time she did give us does not disappoint. Now, now, Mrs. Croft, we don't want to be thought unsophisticated, do we? The very definition of restraint, Dame Helen plays Gosford Park's head housekeeper, the woman responsible for much of the day-to-day -day running of the house. But she's also someone holding onto a deep, dark secret of her own. I suppose it was easier that way. My sister certainly never forgave me for it. Number five, Marcella. Cal. Have I seen you here before? Lauded by the judges at the Cannes Film Festival in 1984, who crowned Mirren as best actress for her role, Cal is the story of a young man on the fringes of the IRA who begins a love affair with a Catholic woman, whose Protestant policeman husband he had helped to kill a year earlier. It's complicated, but compelling. Why don't you come over later? About eight? Mirren plays the widower Marcella for an emotionally charged but expertly measured performance and she proves herself more than capable of adopting the often tricky Irish accent too. Would you like a lift to Mass on Sunday? Number 4, Victoria, The Long Good Friday. We're just docking now. It'll be nice and quiet if you want to sleep. 
rightly regarded as one of the greatest British films of all time, The Long Good Friday might have been an entirely different movie had Mirren not been involved. I hate lifts. It gets really claustrophobic in here with a lot of people. The actress reportedly fought hard to ensure her character Victoria was much more complex than originally planned, avoiding most of the stereotypes associated with most mob boss moles at the time. And her influence doesn't go unnoticed, with Mirren's multi-layered portrayal adding an extra dose of gritty realism and the raw emotion to the gruesome proceedings. Don't treat me like one of your thugs. Number three, Jane Tennyson, prime suspect. You see I Tennyson? Uh, no, uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm in court all afternoon. Mirren made a massive push for gender equality as Jane Tennyson in Prime Suspect, which became a definitive role for her. A police drama dealing with unique cases on a series-by-series -series basis, it showcased the trials and tribulations of the Greater London Metropolitan Police Service's first female detective chief inspector, and also gave viewers an inside look at the kind of institutionalized sexism that existed in the force at the time. Well, obviously, you're a liberated and enlightened woman. Oh, thank you, David. It wasn't all for the sake of high drama, either. When the first prime suspect was shown to the Met Police, it actually received a standing ovation for its accuracy. I'm gonna get him. I am gonna keep on at him till he cracks. Number two, Queen Charlotte, The Madness of King George. Good evening, Mrs. King. Good evening, Mr. King. Mirren bagged her first Oscar and second BAFTA nominations for this performance, alongside fellow nominee Nigel Hawthorne. Based on the real-life experiences of the mentally ill monarch, George III, and a script from renowned playwright Al Bennett, The Madness of King George also earned praise at the Cannes Film Festival, with Mirren bagging another Best Actress award for her troubles. Where are you taking him? Her role as Charlotte is largely a supporting one to Hawthorne's eponymous king, but her scenes are stacked with the sort of splendor we've since come to expect. No, he must know. George, you must know. Come away. Number one, Queen Elizabeth II, the Queen. Yes. I suppose that is some consolation. It's the film that confirmed Mirren a household name all around the world. In short, the Queen captures this actress at her very best, charting the head of the royal family's response to the death of Princess Diana. Mirren studied photos and video footage for the role and worked extensively with an accent coach to perfect her performance. I believe a few over-eager editors are doing their best to sell newspapers and it would be a mistake to dance to their tune. The results were so convincing that production staff reportedly began addressing her as if she were Her Majesty herself. Of course, the public and critics were equally impressed and Mirren finally bagged that long-awaited Oscar. They love giving awards to queens. I they don't do, know why. Right? They do. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.